Well, hello, brothers and sisters, and a very warm welcome to the Keys of the Kingdom Holy Bible YouTube channel, the only channel that tells you everything about the Bible they do not want you to know, and they really do not want you to know. My name is Christopher Sparks, and I'm the translator of the Keys of the Kingdom Holy Bible. This is the new red and gold leather edition, recently released and is available only through the website keysofthekingdombible.com and I'll put the link in the description box below. This is not available through Amazon for every reason you can think of, not least that they banned me from ever having a publishing account with them, no reason given other than violating content guidelines, but they wouldn't explain what that means. Uh, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of Israel. Now a very warm thank you to the patrons of this channel who helped to make this work possible. I have given everything of my life into this work and I've invested tens of thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of hours, my income and everything to make possible this restoration of the Word of God that is so desperately needed. You know, Jesus said, Elijah restores all things. Well, surely it doesn't take much of an IQ jump to know that we have to have the Word of God restored first. And thank you also to all subscribers and to regular listeners and the wonderful comments that you make. These, as I often say, I believe create a wall of fire to our would-be detractors because it would just make them look foolish against the marvellous comments that you make. Now, I do intend continuing the Elijah in the Wilderness theme and I'll pick that up in a day or two because more needs to be said about this, how we survive through these times and what, is God, what God is calling us to. But first I wanted to give a brief news update. I've just finished a reading of all Paul's letters. I do love Paul's depth and his perfect harmony with all the prophets and apostles when he's translated organically and without grammatical dodges, especially of verbs, and without fraudulently altering Greeks to Gentiles and without altering Judahites to Jews, so giving the impression that the new covenant is with Jew and Gentile, but the new covenant is with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. God has not made any other covenant. So Paul's, Paul's letters are deep and they are rich and rarefied, and I thoroughly enjoyed reading them. And I've turned now to reading again about Elijah. And I like that when he brings healing to the widow of Zarephath. And she says, the word of Yahweh in your mouth is the truth. The end of 1 Kings 17. The word of Yahweh in your mouth is the truth. She realized who he was, a man of Elohim. So may that be said of us. Please, Lord God, may your word in our mouth be the truth and that people recognize. Now, I've just spent the best part of three days refining my cataloging of these videos. So I've got a much shorter register of them, which is easier to scan through. And... Um, and is much more efficient for my purposes. And you might notice um, that I have also numbered them all so that um, they can be more easily referred to instead of vaguely referred to as, you know, that, that video about the sons of God sometime last year. And instead a number can be given and you can scroll straight to it. So that, all that together was a lot of work, um, but it was worth it and it feels very nice and tidy and efficient now. But the main reason for this news update, 
My son is a gardener by his trade, Sparks Gardens. Couldn't be better, could it? And realising that work alone is futile, he figured there has to be a higher purpose in life. And so he came to the view that helping promote Keys of the Kingdom is for him that higher purpose. So, praise God, he has paid someone to convert all my YouTube videos from number 34 on to be recorded as Apple Podcasts. So you can find these if you have iPhones, Apple phones, um, as of course, Keys of the Kingdom Holy Bible. And by clicking on that bar, they will all appear. And he has put an immense amount of time and thought and investment into all this, and that will not be the end of it. He has further plans, and it will be ongoing. And he has a good administrative mind um, to offer. So um, what a blessing this is for me, and what an inheritance and blessing for him. And praise God. And I've been doing this work longer than he's been alive. But certainly all church translations are a sickly product of post-Reformation Archbishop of Canterbury woeful orthodoxies. And these orthodox teachings can be found in all of them. The Pillars of Babylon. So the Keys of the Kingdom alone is free of the Reformation shadows. Thanks be to God. None of those orthodoxies is in Keys of the Kingdom. I hope. I don't think there are, as I know what, the, what those orthodoxies are. And I believe I have refreshed it. So that times of refreshing might come from the face of the Lord. Now, I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago that uh, Brother Andrew sent me the Psalms in Scots, and I've been reading it again today. Thank you again, Andrew. I so love that book. Such a blessing from you. Thank you. And uh, I've, uh, Psalm, I'm s sort of rather stuck in Psalm 83 because it, it's a perfect prayer for these times, and I'm reading from it every day, and uh, I've written a song from it, which... Uh, when I've got it good enough, I will upload. But I was looking at it in the uh, Scots today. There are some great phrases. Psalm 83, verse 2. And your haters racks up the head. Racks, it's spelled R-A-X. And I presume that means lifts up or raises up the head. So your haters, speaking to God. And your haters racks up the head. And uh, then verse 6, Edom's hoofs and the Ishmaelites. Now, hoofs has no margin notes, and it's not in the um, glossary at the front either, but I presume it means that houses, or as it is in Keys of the Kingdom, the tents. And then verse 15, And we, we a swirl in blasts, gee them, uh, sorry, gar them cling. And we a swirling blast, gar them cling. So, and with your swirling blast, and give them terror, I think that means. And verse 17, let them be whammled doon. Whammled doon. I don't think that needs any translation, and it's, it's better as it is. Let, let them be whammled doon. D-U-N-E. And whammled is W H A double M L apostrophe D. What a great word and what a great phrase. Whammled a dune. And the last verse, 18. Oh, excuse my accent, my Scottish friends. That, uh, you, you cannot read this but without some accent. And I, I wish a, a Scot were, were here to read it for you better than I can. But uh, sign sell they can that you sell, 
where that name of your ain Jehovah a highest the hell yearth a boon. So, so that they know that yourself, that they can that yourself, where that name are your own, oh your own, O oh, your ain, with that name of your own, with your name, Jehovah, are highest the hell yearth a boon, are the highest above all earth. Wonderful, wonderful. I absolutely love it. Please, somebody, make a recording of these in the uh, proper Scots dialect. It would be such a joy. Now, where are we now? Just to close off. We are praying every day and constantly for the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the joint body of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. According to um, Ezekiel 37, the healing of the two sticks. And this is referred to in Ephesians chapter 2, the make the two one. So we're praying for the body of Christ to be strengthened, strengthened in spirit, and to be protected. I pray, I pray on my knees for the body of Christ, my brothers and sisters, to be protected. For you to be strengthened in spirit, and those who are asleep to be awakened, because there is surely a great harvest to bring in, and this is our duty, to be witness to them. And then we pray, like of old, like the prophets of old, against the attack of the enemy, that they might be destroyed. And Psalm 83 speaks strongly of the destruction and driving away of God's enemies. And particularly today, the tents of Esau and the Ishmaelites. And so according to Revelation 20 verse 9, that fire from heaven might come down and destroy them. Whatever that fire from heaven means, it says in the prophet Obadiah, that Jacob will be a fire to Esau. So I take this fire to be figurative. I take it to be our praying, our witnessing, our proclamation of the truth, and this restoration of the scriptures, and also our praising and worship in spirit and in truth. You know, they are terrified of being found out, and they are being found out. So, when they are found out, and this fire comes from heaven, or from the sky, which, as I say, I believe is from us, then comes the resurrection, the glorious resurrection, when we will put on immortality, which we are not born with. You know, Christ has brought to light immortality. That's what it says in the opening of 2 Timothy. So it really is up to us. It's an immense privilege to know who we are in Christ, that we are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. And I love this in the opening of Joshua chapter 5. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites on the western side of the Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanites by the sea, heard that Yahweh had dried the waters of the Jordan from before the sons of Israel until we had crossed over, their hearts melted, and there was no longer any spirit in them because of the sons of Israel. Should this not be also our inheritance as, as the sons of Israel and the daughters of Israel? 2 Corinthians 6.16 The sons and daughters of the Almighty. Praise again to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose we are. We are not our own. We were bought at a price. Our life is not our own. We have signed up to having our life 
ordered by the Supreme Commander. And Paul talks about soldiers. And I fought the good fight, and that's what we are doing. Praise God. Thank you for listening, and bless you all. And uh, please consider um, subscribing to this channel if you are not already subscribed. Praise God. Bless you all.